Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today my guest is Stephen Howard. He is the Senior Legal Counsel and Global Privacy Office Officer for Sony Mobile Communications, Inc., based in Tokyo, Japan. Now that's a long name. Uh, but Stephen is a proud graduate of the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii and presently is the at-large council member, member for Hawaii and the Pacific Islands for the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. So how did a young law graduate from Hawaii become Sony's in-house counsel for many areas? What is Sony's global legal perspective? What is the Inter-Pacific Bar Association? And what roles does Stephen play in these international networks? Well, we got a chance to ask Stephen now. So Stephen, first, please uh, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. You're, you're here from Tokyo for a few days. Yes. I understand you uh, have a uh, reunion of your law class. What, what uh, year is that? Uh, 20 years. 20 years, 20. and yes. uh, you've done a lot in 20 years. Uh, uh, it's hard to believe. It's been 20 years, and yes, a lot has happened in that time. Okay, so for the young law graduates, mm -hmm. okay, how did you get to Hawaii? Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get involved in Asia Pacific matters, or what was right. your interest? And then we'll go into a little bit of your legal involvement in Asia right. Pacific. But first, what, what brought you to Hawaii and got you into law school? And well, I mean, I'm originally from Alabama. Okay. Uh, and as you might guess that, you know, 30, 40 years ago, there wasn't too much uh, interest in Asia in Alabama. Uh, but I had an exchange student from Japan come to our school, uh, high school. Oh, okay. And through him got really interested in Asia and then in college started to take Japanese. And so that, you had a tomodachi? Tomodachi, yes. Okay. I had a very good tomodachi. Interesting thing is he's still in Alabama, married a local, and became <laughs> a local, and I moved to Japan. So, you switch uh, roles. Yes. So our mothers joke that they switch sons. So, but uh, yeah, so I got interested in Asia through through him, and then I went and I taught English as my first job in Japan. At, so, so yes. that that was after you graduated, after graduated from, from university. From university, yes. where and it was. I at? went to school in Connecticut, a small okay. school called Connecticut College, okay. for liberal arts, and my my major was Asian studies. So, so you, you and, and you had this interest in Japan from your yes. your friend. Right. I mean, it's amazing how these, yes. you know, these things work out. Right. This this contact, mm -hmm. it got you interested in Japan. You ultimately graduated from college and then went to Japan? I went to Japan and I taught English in my hometown, Birmingham, Alabama's sister city in Japan of Hitachi, Japan, where the company started. Okay, yes. oh, that's interesting too. And then, right. you, and it, I mean, all, all these little strings, I mean, right. now you're working for Sony. Yes, <laughs> and I've been a lifelong user of Sony products. I never knew my first stereo as a kid was a Sony. So uh, yeah, I never thought I would uh, okay. work for it. All right, so, so how'd you get to Hawaii? You, I mean, a, a, a boy from Alabama, yes. I, I see you, you know, how you got to Japan right. through this cross-cultural yes. uh, student exchange, which kind of proves the value of it, doesn't right. it? I mean, you know, okay, yes. so how, how did you get to Hawaii? What? Well, I, it was also through uh, friendships I made. In, uh, I, after coming back from that first trip to Japan, I studied at um, University of California, San Diego, and had some really good friends in the program who were from here. And I got to know Hawaii through them. And then when I was researching law schools, I, uh, I, I looked at West Coast and ones that had focus on Asian, program, Asian law programs. And I, it was just by luck, I happened to stop in Hawaii on the way back from another stint in Japan uh, when they had a new admittees reception. So I got to meet the faculty. I got to meet the students at the law school. And it was just, it was amazing. Everyone was so nice. You know, it's the spirit of aloha. And I thought, if I'm going to spend three years going through law school, 
I should do it somewhere where not only the weather is nice, but the people are nice too, and very you know top class professors too. Okay, uh, and and so then you applied, got into the law yeah. school, and so you've always. I mean, it sounds like then from high school. Mm -hmm you had this kind of Asian bent, right. or at least towards Japan, is, yes. that, is that right? Yes. And yeah. kind, of an, kind of an interest, and that, that drew you through other contacts to mm -hmm. Hawaii, right. and, and based on the Aloha spirit you found at the law school, yes. this might not be a bad place to go to law right. school. Is that it? So, so you've always kind of had this yeah. desire mm -hmm. in the background. Is it, I mean, can you, what else, can, I mean, it's, 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 it's based on friendship. It, it pretty much has been, yeah, wow. meeting people and getting to know them and learning about where they're from and their background and then finding out something new and interesting and it, say, let's explore that. Yeah, you know, so. and that's very, mm -hmm. also very, very Asian, relationship-driven. Mm -hmm. right. And my experience has been that yes. relationships make a big difference yes. uh, in everything you do in Asia. Right, uh, yeah, that's true. And, and that's sort of what mm -hmm. you've found out, haven't you, right. in, your, in your development as from a high schooler mm -hmm. into law school. What, what made you want to go to law, into law? Uh, the simple answer is Tony La Russa, okay. the, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinal baseball team. I found out that he was a lawyer. Okay by training, and I realized I was looking, should I do a PhD program in international relations? Should I do law? Should I do accounting? I thought, law, you can do so much with that training. You don't have to be just, a, you don't have to be a lawyer. It, it can help you in so many other areas. So I thought, well, if I go into international relations and get a PhD, pretty much stuck in government or academics, but with a legal degree, you know, it, it can help you in so many different areas. It opens uh, up the field. Yes. Okay. So I, I saw when I learned Tony La Russa, I don't even really know the St. Louis Cardinals that well, but I saw that, wow, and he talked about how he used his legal skills in managing a baseball team. And I thought, that's just amazing. So even if I find out I don't like practicing law, I can use these skills in other areas. Ah, the so, law, de law degree yes. opens lots of doors. Right. Okay. Yes. All right, so what, what did you do with your law degree? How did you get involved in, uh, I, I know that you, you went to Japan and spent some time there, but how, what, what was your, you know, how did you get there uh, after you graduated? What? Yeah, so right after I graduated, I went and I, I clerked for um, Walter Kiramitsu at the Inter Intermediate Court of Appeals. Here in Hawaii. Yeah. Here in Hawaii. Yeah. And halfway through the clerkship, he resigned to become UH General Counsel. So it was uh, myself, him, and his secretary who started the office, and his, his other clerk came you know, on board, too, a little bit later. And it was just such an incredible experience. And we were based at the law school. Uh, One day, Professor Levin uh, from the law school, Mark, the Mark Japan, Levin, Mark yeah. Levin, the, the uh, Japan law professor, yeah. sticks his head in the door and says, hey, Steve, are you interested in working in Japan? I know this lawyer who has his law firm in Tokyo who's looking for a, um, an American lawyer to join, a young American lawyer okay. to join him. And so bingo. Bingo, well, you, yeah. Yeah, you, you said yes. Uh. I said yes, <laughs> and it, you know, it happened so quickly, um, and about three months after first learning about it, I was in Tokyo working at a, a law firm doing um, international well, business law. What, what was the law firm, what did you do there? So it, the, the law firm was uh, Matsuo Kosugi, um, Tasuku Mas Matsuo is a, he has a strong ties to Hawaii. He has done um, some classes at UH Law School, and so he had a strong connection to Hawaii. And he wanted somebody from um, Hawaii to come and. So be his th there is an advantage to being a law yes. student in yes. Hawaii. Yes. Wow. Okay. And there have been others before and after me, um, Hawaii law grads who have been at the firm. Okay. So, and. It was, it was an incredible experience because I'm there, I'm, well, there are two other foreigners there, an Australian and a, an, an American from California, uh, senior to me, and we were doing mainly business transactional practice, but also assisting foreign clients in their work in Japan, both transactional and litigation, and assisting Japanese clients with their work overseas. And while I had absolutely no desire to actually do litigation, 
that was actually one of the best experiences I had, is assisting clients on both sides to learn, because American system and Japanese litigation systems are so different. So teaching the clients about and it gives you a broad understanding yes. of both and also introduction to Asia right. after you've had the American background, right. really, and then you learn all, all of the, the Asian background. And Japan yes. does a lot with the rest of Asia, too. Yes, it so does. So I, I, yes. I would think that you would find a lot of contacts there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So mm -hmm. that, that experience, how long did that, how, how long were you there? Well, I originally went over, it was going to be two years, and I was going to return to Hawaii uh, and practice here. That, I went over in 1999, and I haven't been back since. Okay. I was at the law firm for eight years. And then what happened? And then I went, um, I went in-house with an IBM spinoff. You know, IBM is a continuously changing company. Uh -huh. And at that time, they spun off their digital printing business. Okay. And I interviewed for the Japan role. A, a recruiter came to me and said, are you, you know, interested in this? Because I was looking for something because Working in-house in a Japanese firm at that time, for a foreign lawyer, there really wasn't too much room to move up. You know, I couldn't have become partner or anything else. So I was thinking of, well, I need to find some different experience. And just this opportunity came up. I interviewed for the Japan position, but I told them, you don't want me. You need a Japanese lawyer, because there's focus only on Japan. And then that, the Japan had recommended me for the APAC position. And what, where was that? It was. Uh, well, IBM has their Asia uh, uh, headquarters in Shanghai. Okay. So originally, I was supposed to move to Shanghai. Okay. But because IBM, you know, a lot of people work um, from home or remotely. Right. right. So the, they agreed because of my kids' schooling to allow me to stay in Tokyo until you know, my, the kids were ready at a good point in their schooling to move. And thankfully, about uh, six months after joining, they moved the headquarters to uh, Singapore okay. because that's where our joint venture partner, Rico, had their headquarters. I see. So I, I'm glad I never had to move twice, you know, to Shanghai and then to Singapore. And, and the skyline of Singapore is yes. what's in our background. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. And so how long were you, you moved to Singapore with your family? You were married and right. had yeah, some I had kids, a couple my, kids. Both of my kids were born in Tokyo. Okay. and. Uh, yeah, we moved uh, in 2009 to Singapore, and I was the general counsel um, for Asia Pacific for the company with Infoprint Solutions, which was a joint venture with IBM and Rico of Japan. Okay, so so now yes. you are Sony. What what is your yes. title? What what are you doing for Sony? So I am a senior legal counsel, and and just recently been added as a global privacy officer for Sony Mobile Communications. So we are the uh, mobile handset part of Sony. In America, phones. probably, phones. yeah, so, so what it is, yeah. Uh, in America, pretty much you don't know about it because Apple and Samsung um, have really cornered the market. But huh. um, we're, we're big in, mainly in Japan, greater China, and Europe. Okay. And so I focus on the, um, the mobile business of Sony. I'm one of the members of the headquarter legal team. How, how many are in the, I mean, what, yes. How many are in the, the law department of Sony? What are we talking about? Well, for Sony Mobile, it's a fairly lean team for the size of our business. We At headquarter, we have uh, about um, for law, trade compliance, and, and uh, compliance and governance, we have uh, about 10 people only. Okay. I'm the only uh, um, licensed lawyer. We have uh, one of the Japanese, um, uh, you know, legal uh, staff on our team is also licensed in New York, but we don't have any Japanese And you, you have lawyers, lawyers from all over other jurisdictions? Well, the... we used to be Sony Ericsson, so we have a huge presence in Sweden. <laughs> so we have Swedish lawyers, and, and in Sweden we have a Scottish lawyer and a, a, another American lawyer. So, uh, And then we have in China uh, two uh, lawyers there. And then my replacement in Singapore, um, from the Japan team, she went down there to take over at okay. APAC. So you got so a mixture of lawyers small. from all yes. over the world. Yes. And uh, after we take a break, mm -hmm. I want to ask you what you do. And then okay. I want to ask you a little bit about what's coming up with Sony. Yes. And then the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. I want to ask about that, what's, okay. what's happening there. So we're going to take a short break and be right back. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Aloha and mabuhay. 
My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Law Across the Sea. I'm Mark Schlaub, your host. I am with Stephen Howard, who is the Inter-Pacific in-house counsel for Sony located in Japan, and, and you've had a, I mean, your career started because of friendships yes. and relationships. That, that's so yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. And now you're working for Sony. Give, give us some example of, mm -hmm. of what you do for Sony uh, and maybe a, a, a matter that you handled, and then I want to ask a little bit more about Sony. Okay. Yeah, so I guess since we have such a small team, and we are the global uh, legal team, and we, we do operate globally, so I work with colleagues from all over. I handle, private firms, maybe? Private yeah, we firms. do, of course, yeah. uh, engage with uh, private firms uh, you know, when necessary. Um, I, I handle five areas, global sales and marketing, global quality and customer service, hardware sourcing, so all the parts that go into a phone, software sourcing, and privacy and data wow. protection. Do you ever sleep? I, I try, but having a lot of colleagues here and our global marketing teams in London, yeah, my day can be it's very 24 long. hours long. Yes, it's wow. a constant job. But, but in, when I was a, a general counsel in Singapore and handling the whole Asia Pacific region, I had everything. I was a team of one wow. handling all of our operations in um, all of Asia from India down to Australia, New Zealand, up to Korea except for China and Japan. Any example of type of thing that you, you worked on that you can share with us? Well, what has basically taken over my life for the last two years has been our work on the European um, General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR. Right. That's the, Explain that a little bit, please. Yeah. That uh, Europe um, is very focused on individual rights and having people own their data. And so they put in place this new uh, regulation that basically gives people a lot of rights and sets a lot of very strict penalties on um, companies and users and processors of data. So I've been working with in mobile and with the greater Sony group. Sony is so diverse, electronics, movies, pictures, PlayStation, financial industry in Japan, and getting all of these groups and businesses to work together to try to come up with one way of sort of addressing these very important regional and even global laws is, uh, is quite an endeavor. So that's what I've been working on for two years now. Wow. Yes. And, and the protection is much broader than the United States. Yeah, the U.S., you know, there's no federal law for data protection. I, I know one of the senators from um, Oregon has just put uh, forth a potential bill for a federal law. And big companies uh, like Apple and um, Amazon, they're pushing for a federal law so they don't have to follow 50 different laws. Um, California has a new law coming into effect a couple of years. Mm. Colorado, Ohio just um, has an act. Uh, but um, it's all over the place with yeah, different states. Yeah, and they're all different. Yes. Okay. What is Sony up to? What are, what are we, I mean, give us something to tell us what's, <laughs> yes. what, what's happening with Sony. I mean, Sony is an incredible company you know, to work for. Like, I've been a lifelong fan, and uh, I've known, you know, known them from the Trinitron TV days through the PlayStations. Uh, one of the interesting things, they, they relaunched Ibo, their little dog, yes. the robotic dog. Yes. Yes. And you know, Sony has been getting into AI, artificial intelligence, ah. and they are using that technology in Ibo so it can learn. It's, 
it's Wi-Fi and um, you know, network linked, and it learns as you have it. They're not cheap, but um, yeah. it's really interesting what they're doing there of bringing all different parts of Sony into you know one product. Well, and that's interesting yes. too because there's a lot of talk that. Mm -hmm. uh, AI may replace attorneys for some things, or <laughs> yes. may already have, as far right. as I know. But uh, okay, all right. Yes. Um, so that's something in the future, uh, right? For, for Sony AI. Yes. All right. Yeah. You're also involved in the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. Yes. What is it? What do you do? And tell us a little bit more about the IPBA. Yeah. So the IPBA is an incredible organization that I actually the first time I got involved in it was when they had, I don't know if you hosted, a conference here in Honolulu right. at the yeah. Alamoana Hotel, yes. and they asked law students to help out at registration desk and, okay. and everything, and I, uh, I did that, and it was an incredible conference, and um, from then, I really thought, oh, this is an interesting organization, and then I moved to the law firm in Tokyo, and they had their meeting in 2001 in Tokyo, and I was able to attend, and, and it's, it's lawyers from it's, it's international law right. school? Is that what it is? It's, uh, I mean, the focus is inter-Pacific, so it's not specifically Asia-focused. Mm -hmm. It's inter-Pacific, and it's not only lawyers from the region. It's lawyers who have an interest and have you know, business in Asia and the Pacific Rim. South America, North America, Asia, Europe, a lot of members from Europe who do business in Asia. And it fits for so, you right. with your in-house Right. Council position, yeah. I mean, for me, it's a great opportunity to learn, you know, from um, you know the, the 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 other lawyers who are focused on certain topics, because in house you're a very much, at least from my um, experience, a generalist. So it's really it's a great opportunity to learn specifics and new developments in the law, not just in the areas that I cover, but I learn something new that I can use in my practice. So the Inter-Pacific. Bar Association yes. is kind of like a global group of lawyers, right? It's, it's, it is. it's globalists, if we may use right. that term, yes. right? Who, yes. who uh, look out and uh, find colleagues and maybe mm -hmm. maybe friends. Yes, is definitely that, is, friends. That, that's kind of what you've been doing for your your whole uh, professional career, even before. Right. Is finding friendships that turned into something that you did for a living, huh? Right, and they have um, the main. The main meeting they have is the annual conference once a year, and I look forward to that of getting together with old friends every year, and uh, and it has been wonderful. I've I've you know met contacts. So if I need I have an issue that I need you know just quick advice on, there's always somebody from the Inner Pacific Bar Association I can go to and ask for you know just a, a quick question, and they won't you know say okay well that will cost you for 15 minutes of billing. So. It's a wonderful, a very, uh, the camaraderie is, is, uh, is amazing. And that's a very also yes. Asian type of a uh, reaction. It's, yes. a re again, a relationship right. type, type uh, reaction and prof where it works into your profession right. also, right? I mean, that's what I hear you yes. saying, right? Yes, but it's not the type of, oh, we are friends, but we can't have this other person as a friend. It's very open and welcoming of you know, others who are interested in the law, that's what I found is that someone wants to come in, I mean, they have a program for um, young lawyers and students to try to bring them into there, give them a scholarship to attend the conference to, to you know, help them in their career development. So it's, it really helps both the, the long-term members plus try, the new members and bringing in people from all different countries and try to get, uh, the lawyers from uh, more you know, the developing countries involved and meet with you know, all the, uh, the really esteemed members. How are we doing yeah. from Hawaii? Do we have uh, a good group from Hawaii? We, we have a Hawaii wonderful lawyers? group. We have a wonderful group from Hawaii, and uh, every year we have our picture in the Hawaii Bar Journal. So <laughs> of, those, of those who attend the. Yeah, those who attend. So yeah. the more the merrier, and I look forward to it every year to meet all the friends from Hawaii, and uh, it's. Um, so my position now, I am the um, at-large council member for Hawaii to try to encourage Hawaii lawyers to attend the meeting and become involved in IPBA. When is the next meeting? What, what do you have planned? So what, the next what, what meeting happened? is in beautiful Singapore here, okay. uh, where I lived for seven years. And uh, it's April 25th to 27th, 2019. 
Uh, we have an incredible lineup of, of sessions, uh, of um, a lot of sort of a huge variety of topics. So there's something for everyone. We have the prime minister coming to give a keynote of speech Singapore. of yeah. Singapore to um, give the keynote speech. And of course, a lot of fun. That's the great thing about the IPBA. It's a fun time. There's so. both the uh, academic side, yes. if you will, and then you have uh, the social right. side, too. And, yes. and bo both of them kind of go hand in hand in Asia. Right. right? Yes, and, they do. And, and so that, that's happening. What, what, uh, do you have any specific plans? For Hawaii lawyers in in Singapore in April of next year, we're hoping to have a Hawaii night, okay, so we well, can gather the attendees from Hawaii and friends of Hawaii and have a nice, you know, Hawaiian night. Um, what do we do? What do we do on Hawaii night? I think I want to go to this. <laughs> so what, what, what happens? We, we just uh, share the spirit of aloha with uh, all the other attendees who can come in and really learn a, a little bit more about Singapore, too. You know, we're hoping to have it at a venue that will give the Hawaii um, attendees sort of a little taste, a more taste of Singapore. You know, um, and just the camaraderie to get to know each other and, you know, see old friends, meet new ones. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So we are looking forward to that. Yes. And that kind of uh, is a, a culmination of, of relationships for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that you developed uh, from high school yes. to the present. And right. you have gone from a mm -hmm. colleague, a friend in high school who was from Tokyo. Now you live in Tokyo right. and spend time, mm -hmm. I guess, in various other countries. Yes. Stephen, mm -hmm. what have you learned from all this? What, what, what do you take out of all this professional relationships that mm -hmm. you've had since high school, really, are the you know the development mm -hmm. uh, towards Asia. What what have you learned? What what, what have you learned? To me, I mean, the most important thing is this world is such an incredible place with such diversity, and that diversity is the strength. Um, learning about other cultures, learning about um, you know the way that you interact with people is it can be so different depending on you know where they're from where you're from but in the end you can find commonality and you know you can really get along and accomplish something if people from all over different cultures and you know ways of life and it's been so amazing i think so yes. although we're all different yes we all have something in common right and yes. that's important i think especially nowadays I think so too. Yes, it's. Uh, I mean, one of the things I found from working in Singapore, Asia is such a diverse place. The way that I would work with my colleagues in India was so different from the way I worked with the colleagues in in Australia. Even Singapore, you know, the different um, you know diversity there. So the working with the Indian colleagues in Singapore or the Malay colleagues. It's so amazing that you, you have to learn how to re react and interact with so many different cultures. It's, it's been amazing. It's so fun. I think. Well, Stephen, thank you very much. You. I, I enjoyed learning your background and, and how you got involved in this and look forward to seeing you in Singapore. Yes, I All look right. forward to seeing you and many others. Thank Aloha. You. Aloha.